guys Tiffany back again um, I was super super excited when I saw that on your paper pantry that the theme for this month's mail art um, envelope swap is butterflies I do love butterflies um, so I sat down and started thinking and I come across I come across something on uh, jelly I think it was jelly um, print jelly plate people on Pinterest to a pins a pen that had a colorful butterfly um, image in it and it just struck a chord and so when I get inspiration it is like wow it is like overwhelming um, to me because it is literally just busy 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 throw it down throw it down get all of the creative juices out while you uh, have them going so um, what I created was uh, this envelope um, I love 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 how it turned out and to be honest I haven't even really uh, finished up the back or anything because when I got this going I was like I need to get this on YouTube uh, I want to be able to share this with everybody because I loved how it turned out so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna recreate this envelope um, I am using one of the uh, Recollections uh, envelopes in the value pack that you can get at Michael's. Um, that's what I'm going to be using today. So, what you will need is um, I am using some of my overspray uh, paper towels, which you know how I love my paper towels with my spray inks and stuff. We're going to be using that. We're going to be using the Mod Podge. Um, to put them on there. Also going to be using some acrylic paints, um, some a few stamps, and a stencil. So I'm gonna, I mean literally when I just, it, it started, oh and some gesso, it started flooding. I am going to try to remember every step that I took but the first step I know for sure is to take um, your Mod Podge I'm using mattes here and a uh, foam brush and just I like to open this up because when I get crazy with the Mod Podge it will stick the other layer down so I am just and if you can tell my hands I have whew, I don't know what happened but when I woke up this morning I have been in my studio all day um, and I have been enjoying every minute of it. Um, take your um, two-ply, three-ply paper towel, whatever it is that you're using, and um, tear it apart. It's usually uh, two to three layers. And then I just, I like the, I don't know if you can see this. If you can see the texture in it or not. But I like for it to have wrinkles and stuff in it. Um, so I'm really not trying to straighten it out too much. Just trying to tear off uh, some of the colors and put it down. And I, for the most part, this is out of my spilt bottle of Mod Podge that happened. I don't know if you watched that video or not, but whew, Lord, it was a mess. Anyway, so I am just intuitively putting whatever colors I have on these napkins down. That's why it's always a great idea to uh, keep your napkins. Um, and I, these were sprayed with Dilutions ink. And as you know, or may not know, but Dilutions ink is a water-based ink. So once you reactivate it, you'll see when I get this Mod Podge on, the blue comes off of there. That doesn't matter to me. So, and anything that you have overhanging, of course, you can just trim off whenever you get through. I'm probably going to fast forward this step now that you know uh, what the process is to putting the paper towel down. And I'll be back uh, in just a minute.
also don't be concerned if it starts lifting up like that because this Mod Podge, when it dries, I mean, it's going to be stiff. So, you, uh, it's not going to be like your paper towel is going to lift off. It may in the beginning. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I believe this Mod Podge is cursed. It just fell off the table. Um... So yeah, don't be concerned about that, about it being soft, because when it's wet, of course, it's going to be like paper, because it is paper. I'm not too concerned about covering every square foot of this. Um, I just, I'm simply doing this for the cover, cover for the, ooh, for the color and the texture. Alright, so now we have it fairly covered. I'm going to dry this with my heat tool and I'll be right back. Hey guys, um, back again. I uh, just wanted to show you at this step we have put the paper towel down. We have Maj Paj it to death. It is, it has some, I mean you're not going to have to worry about this paper towel coming up so you know we're going to trim all this down so just so you know it's hard um not crispy hard but it, it is hard to the touch so now what i'm going to do is um get some gesso i'm using the liquitex basic um gesso here and we're going to gesso over Ugh. if it'll ever come out. We're going to just gesso over lightly with some watered down gesso um, to create the watered down effect because as you can tell it's not quite as bright um, once you put the gesso on it. So that's our goal here is just kind of to water it down and get, um, get it good and watered. Because remember, this is water-based paint. So as I go through, not water-based paint, but the water-based dye is going to actually um, kind of pick up. And that's okay too. And, you know, get all, all the parts of the envelope too, even the parts that don't have paper towel on it because what we're going to do you want it to have some coverage too because we're going to paint it so it'll hold that color better um, with the gesso so that's good i'm going over here to dry it so now we're back we've got the gesso dry we've got the uh everything ready to go for our next layer okay so i'm going to take a piece of bubble wrap and okay make sure I'm on frame and this is going to be um, just the cheap craft paint you use whatever paint you have on hand oh, great it's just been one of them days you know it's just been one of them days I've been praying for God to give me more patience because that is not my strongest asset and I think that when you be careful what you pray for because sometimes those trials and tribulations will show up to try to help you gain those patients you've been praying for so whew, goodness okay so i'm just doing like a little piece pink a little piece uh purple and then we're going to uh just lay it down and i kind of went more um purple and pink on the bottom and more on uh, orange and blue on the top here uh where am i okay like that so that's kind of i'm gonna put this up here so i can see it as we go through
All right. So, with that paintbrush that I just threw over here, like a crazy woman, I'm going to just kind of swoosh it. <laughs> I don't know. I make up words. I don't even think that's a real word. But you know what I mean. Just kind of get around the edge. It's good. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, like that. Okay, now, clean your paintbrush off. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it yellow and green. Okay, and now we're going to just smush that around up there. <clears throat> and you can go back as many times as you want to add more color depending on how much coverage you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a tickle in my throat. Alright. So, same deal up here. We're just going to squish it around. Alright. And you can blend it. You can do it however you want to. So, let me think. At this point, I believe I started adding in a few. You couldn't really tell they were dots, but just a few dots here and there. All right, let me get dry. Okay, it's not 100% dry, but it's good enough. So, now what I did was I got the uh, my paintbrush, a small one, and I'm going to use some white paint. What I actually tried to do originally that didn't work out that great is I took the end of the the glue stick because it's round and I put some gesso or acrylic paint or whatever and then I just kind of oh those actually look a little bit better. It may have been because where I was trying to do it was so textured on that one, that envelope, that it uh, didn't do so hot. Okay, so however you want to do it. I'm going to go back and just kind of uh, complete some of those and actually make a few more circles, different sizes. that kind of smooth the paint out okay so that looks good to me now what I did while we're waiting on that stuff to dry is I got this uh, Prima uh, Finabar a stamp this like little honeycomb things is what it looks like to me and I'm just going to use it with the stays on ink archival ink here this waterproof and I just kind of do it like this and just kind of uh, you could of course use a 
real acrylic if you wanted to but if you've watched any of my videos at all you know that I'm just not that kind of girl I like to just be a rebel not nice actually because I'm probably considered uh, lazy when it comes to that but hey art is about having fun not working so whew. all right so that's done now what you'll need or what I used you can use whatever you want is I have found this um, butterfly stencil believe it or not it actually come from the thrift store in a uh, package that I got that was all packaged together I had no idea that it had stencils in there but it did have a few it had hummingbirds and bees and stuff like that and so I used this big one about right here Whew, my workstation is a mess okay so get your little uh, cosmetic sponge because we're gonna be dabbing around on our butterfly and uh, I just used that cheap acrylic paint that I had a while ago and um, just put it where you want it and start dabbing. And I'm sure for this, if you had a, a rubber stamp, a butterfly rubber stamp, you could probably use that if you wanted. Um, I don't have a large butterfly um, stamp. I have some butterfly stamps, but they weren't large enough for what I really wanted. So I just eyeball it and say, do I have enough coverage? Yes, I do. Okay, peel it back. All right, we had some drippage, but that's okay. Because I learned from a while ago making the other one and i'm just going to wipe this down too that you will um we'll be using this stencil to make sure that we have it good so i'm going to run back over here and heat set it real quick okay and you do want to make sure that that is good and dry so now on to the next step okay and this you can use whatever pen you have available. It probably would even work a little bit better if I had an extra fine point, like one of these pens, but I've killed them, um, and so I don't have that option. So I'm just going to go and make some circles, black circles, to kind of define those. See, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't dry. That's probably why I keep killing the pens, you reckon? Yeah, probably. All right, I'm going back and drying this a little bit more. All right, let's try this one more time. All right, so yeah, just outline your circles. You could paint them, uh, whatever you want to do. And then I just put a few little dots too, black dots. Just random, just having fun. I like dots. They always seem to find their self in my journal somehow okay so now this we're just going to outline a little bit so you could like i say do this with a um some other kind of pen but i just have this at the moment so i'm going to use what i have because like i say when inspiration struck I did not have time to go to the car because I think I left my other Sharpies and other black pens inside my bag, my travel bag that's in the car. So, And now on the last one, I was able to define these um, a little bit better than how this turned out. So what I'm going to do is try to find... That's the right side. Try to find your angle where you are. Okay. And so I think I've matched it up. And now I'm going to take, these are the Sharpie water-based paint glitter pens in aqua and in uh, dark pink. 
I filmed these at a uh, liquidation store. But that's not lining up quite right. Maybe I didn't do a flat line quite right. That's okay. Um, and I'm just going to color these in. And you may be saying, wow, that's a lot of work for an envelope. Yes, it is. But you could apply this same technique to canvas, to a journal page, to really anything you wanted to. The thing I'm doing just happens to be an envelope. Okay? So it is a good bit of work, but to me, when I the result is so worth my time um, how it turned out I just loved how it turned out so I just did the inside of those um, the aqua you could do them whatever color you wanted to and you could of course use paint here with the stencil but this glittery thing I like Butterflies make me think of fairy tales and princesses and so I think glitter goes with that too. And I think I'm going to go back to that liquidation place because I got these for like, um, I think it was $4 for a pack of three or four. I think I'm going to go back and buy whatever they have because I love these colors. And I can see me using these. And it seems like every time you find a product, if you're like me, and you really like it, then they will do away with it. That's the look I have. Alright. So now I'm going back with the dark pink glitter paint pen. And just filling in these little details. back and there you have it okay and so I did get a little wonky right here but that's okay that's my heating tool again um and so now all we're gonna do is just go around and outline now because this paper towel part um is so textured it makes it difficult for your pen to actually go around so okay so now we have the butterfly all right and now what I did was just put some little dashes To make it appear like the butterflies flying. At least that was my kind of thought. I thought it was cute. Okay guys. I think that's it. That finishes it up. Um, I'll include the links to yourpaperpantry.ning.com. That's where we do the swapping. And it is a super fun and safe place for you to be able to swap. I appreciate you joining in. Of course I'll go back and actually go around... Um, and trim off the edges but I hope that gives you some ideas uh, go have fun and play